All right, so welcome to this brand new lesson where we're going to go ahead and create this project here. So I'm gonna click anywhere and you're gonna see a few things happen. Uh, it morphs from a circular emoticon with a sad face into a square with rounded corners emoticon with a happy face. And we can see the, the colors also transition as well. Now what's really interesting is that for this technique, which we haven't yet done with the flip plugin, plug you'll find that we're not setting any type of class on it, we're not toggling. We're physically going to move this emoticon HTML element into this column over here and the flip plugin will take care of all the transitions in between for this state. So here is how we do it. So uh, if you open up the project files, we'll see that we're starting with pretty much no HTML uh, and no CSS. And I did that because I really wanna describe each step of what's happening here. No JavaScript as well, as you could see, except for the imports. So the first thing that we're going to do in order to get started, and let me briefly get up my reference monitor, okay? And what we're gonna do is start, just put everything in these two columns inside of a main element, all right? After that, we're gonna go ahead and have a left column and a right column. So left, that'll be empty for now, and then a right column. And again, these are 50-50 uh, columns. And inside of here, we're gonna have uh, in the left column, when the page first loads, by default, we're gonna have it in the left column. So we're gonna put the emoticon element right here in the left column. Inside of here, the emoticon itself has two eyes and a mouth. So the two eyes are, you can think of being in columns. So we're gonna put uh, a eyes class with an eye here and here, okay? So this will be a display flex so that we have two columns uh, for each eye. And then we're gonna have a mouth. And in this case, I used uh, an SVG element. And I did this in Figma and it just literally took a, the pen tool and just made a little, you know, semicircle for the mouth. And I right clicked and I copied the SVG. This is what it gave me. I did add class equals mouth right here. This is real important if you wanna follow along. Okay, so once we have all that ready to go, I, in div class of right is empty, we leave that empty. This is all the HTML that we have. So next up is the CSS. And of course, this is what the project looks like right now. It's completely white and blank. So for our CSS, I will be pasting in rule sets and we'll just talk and I'll describe as I go. So first we have the body element and this gives us this result here. Nothing happening there, that's too exciting. We also have, uh, oh, let me remove that. That doesn't make sense, there we go. And then we also have the main element, all right? So the main element, if you recall, is this element, all right? It houses the left and the right class. And you can see we have display flex of one, height, 100 viewport height, and a cursor of pointer. All right, so that really doesn't do too much in and of itself. There's nothing noticeable yet in the browser. Now we wanna take both the left and right elements, which are immediately nested within main, and we wanna give them some properties that are universal or shared between them. So the first thing that's gonna be shared is the fact that we want to vertically center and horizontally center the emoticon element within both of them. So with that said, we'll use display grid, place content, center. Those two properties give, give us a, a centered element that is vertically centered and horizontally centered. We're also gonna do just a width of 50% and a height of 100 viewport height. Again, if we, we look at the, uh, the result, nothing changes just yet. Now let's take left itself and it does have a different background. So that background color is 131313. So if we save this, we should now have this result. Okay. Next up after that is the emoticon itself. So for the emoticon, I'm gonna go ahead and paste this in. Again, nothing too crazy happening here. Uh, we have a fixed width and height of 300 pixels. We have a background uh, of this purple color, which is the same color as the right side of the column or on, on, on to the right of it. Border radius of 50% because we want it to be a circle. A display grid of place content center just for the two elements of the eyes and the mouth class inside of it. All right, so if we save that, this is what we should have. So it stays in the center, no matter what. Next up, inside of here, we're going to nest because we're using SAS here. We're gonna use eyes, and we're gonna say display flex because there's two eyes. 
and we're also going to give a gap of 4M between them and a margin top of about 30 pixels. So when we save this, we're not gonna see anything just yet because we haven't styled the eye class, which is where we're gonna give them the background color so that we can actually see the eyes. So if I save this, and then I also, let's give it a width of 20 pixels, a height of 20 pixels, and a border radius of 50%, we will see that we have our eyes. They're kind of low, uh, but once we add the mouth, that will bring it back up. So for the mouth, we want to come outside of the eyes class, and we want to give it a mouth here, a margin of 2M, 0, 0, and 0.5M on the left, and then a stroke, because it's SVG, 131313. And this was what gives us our mouth. Here we go. So of course, nothing happens. Now next up, this part is we really want to pay attention to. Uh, we're going to do some CSS overrides. So because we want to style this emoticon differently when it gets over into this element, which is the right div element, the right class, I, we're going to first specify down here, right, and then emoticon. So that simply means if it, if, if this element right here, this emoticon element, is suddenly positioned into this, this div class of right, then what are we gonna override? What are we gonna change about it, okay? So what we're gonna change is the background of the emoticon itself is gonna go from purple to this uh, dark color we've been using. And then we're also gonna give it a border radius of not 50%, which makes it a circle, but maybe something like 1M. All right, so what I'm gonna do real quick, just to demonstrate this, because this the CSS we just wrote doesn't do anything because this emoticon element is not in there. Temporarily, I'm gonna move it in there, and what I could do is just copy and paste it. So I just paste this one, and this is what we have so far, because we made it a square by changing the border radius property and also changing the background property. All right, so we're just gonna leave that there for now. And then we're gonna go ahead and add the eye. So the eye itself uh, needs to have a different background color, which this time it's gonna be the purple color. All right, and then same thing with the mouth. We're gonna change the stroke property. So the stroke is gonna be that. And also, let's have some uh, fun with it. And we're gonna uh, transform and flip the mouth from a frown to a happy face by using transform rotate 180 degrees. So if we save that, this is what we have. We have our two states. All right, so now our goal is, is when we click anywhere, we want this to transi transition and move over and morph into this shape over here. All right, here's how we're going to do it. So we go back to our um, index. We're gonna remove this duplicated version. So now it is empty. And now we start with our JavaScript. So for our JavaScript, we need access uh, to create some um, properties to a few of the DOM elements. So there's gonna be four of them. The first is going to be uh, one called clickable, which is just making the whole main element, you know, a clickable element. We have the left column right here the right column right here, and the emoticon element right here. Next up, we are going to, need to define a Boolean with let happy equals false. By, def by default, in the left column, the emoticon is not happy. Therefore, we're setting it to false. Okay, now we're just going to set, uh, no, first we have to also specify, uh, we have to register the plugin. So GSAP register plugin flip. And of course, that's being included right up here. All right, so now we're going to do our clickable. We're going to add event listener, and it's going to be a click event. We don't need to pass anything into it. And inside of here, let's call a function that we haven't created yet called flip emoticon. And we're going to pass in the state of happy, uh, the Boolean value. So now we're gonna say function flip emoticon, and we're going to name this happy state for this parameter. Remember, we're passing in happy, which is false right there. 
Um, and then now, we, if you recall from the previous lesson, we have to get the state of the emoticon element that we're trying to, to, to move about. So that's the first step. So const state equals flip dot get state emoticon, we pass in this value, and then props, if we need to, we're press here. For now, we're just gonna leave that empty. This in and of itself doesn't do anything noticeable on the site just yet. But now what we want to do is we want to say if happy state, so if that's true, now by default it's set to false, I, we could say left dot append child emoticon. So this right here, append child, uh, is for taking an element like emoticon, which we're passing in there, and moving it into the left element, which is defined right here in this line, which is the left class. And this is saying if it is in a happy state, it's not. That means it would be over in this right column. And so instead we wanna move it back to the left column with this line right here, left.appendchild emoticon. Now, because it's already there, if we ran this code, uh, or if, it, if, if, if we ran this code right now, nothing would happen because we're saying if it is true and it's not. So we have no way of changing that. Assuming it is true though, we do want to reverse the value back to false right here. So now what we could say is else write.appendchild emoticon and happy equals true. Now let's just play this and see what happens and see if it even works. All right, so I, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna click this, and there it goes. There is no transition. However, we know what's happening here because if we look at this area, notice how it switches over into the right. And I click, click back and now it switches to the left right here. That's all that's happening. The final thing that we need to do to get this all to work is outside of the if else clause, we, what we can do is say flip dot from state, a duration of one, oopsie, there we go. And then an ease perhaps of power four out. Let's save it and let's see the magic work. There we go. Now, it's not animating a couple of the properties that we want it to, like the uh, border radius property and the background property. So those two elements we can add right here. So border, radius, and background. Let's go ahead and go back and there we go. We have a transition from the background colors and also the physical shape is morphing. And there we go. So that's how you use the flip plugin. There's a lot of other really cool stuff that you can do. In the next lesson, we'll go ahead and do a challenge and see if you can pull this off. All right, see you then.